Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, where we're shrekking our way. Nice. I'm doing a little gesture, like I'm shrekking through something, Mason. Huh. Can you, are you going to define what shrekking is? Yeah, like it's like trekking, but I'm saying shrekking. That's good. That's yeah. Real good. Thank I've got you. A, I've got a, a picture now. That's, that's <laughs> nice. Folks, I hope you've had a nutritious shrekfest. Oh, very because good. Because we are going to go through... Shrek 2. We're going to go through it. We're going to Shrek through it. I agree. Uh, leave a like if you could. We're doing the whole quadrilogy, Mason. No, I don't think it's technically. I think the word is technically a tetralogy. Is it? I say that with authority, but I'm not sure. Tell someone who gives a shit, Mason. But you know who does give a shit Come about on. this movie? Who? It's, it's me, Mason. Is I, it? I think it's very good. I what thought it was pretty think? good also. Yeah. I thought I'd seen this, but I think what I'd actually seen was a trailer years ago yeah. and then maybe a million memes, a million Shrek-based memes. Yeah, that's how everybody experiences Shrek these days. Mm. It's like Star Wars. Like, you don't need to have to have seen it. Mm. You know, you get it through osmosis and, and memes and whatever. I've pieced it together, exactly. You've pieced yeah. it together, exactly. I think also it's just an excellent extension of the previous movie in terms of, like, character explorations because they put Shrek in new and terrible scenarios which challenges his beliefs. How's which, Shrek going to get out of this one? Exactly. You know, he looks at, like, how he sees himself and how others see him, like, how he's perceived. Can he rise above his station because he's, like, a horrible swamp monster? He is a horrible swamp monster. Like, society is against him as a whole. He's a downtrodden freak, Mason. That's exactly right. Because yes. he's hideous and he's mean mm. and he's gross. And he should go back to the swamp is what you're saying. <laughs> well, he probably just should. And I don't mean like, wow. no, you know, because he doesn't belong in high society, James. Well, no, he doesn't. Of the circumstances of his birth. Was he born in the swamp? I think we'll we ever in, learn about his we parents. Get, I think we might get into a bit more origin stuff. Does he have like a deadbeat dad on. like a lot of Disney characters? Uh, I think, okay, from memory, uh -huh. and I don't know whether this is canon, I think ogres are like sent out on their own after like age seven. They don't have like family communities, but I think that flips on its head in Shrek. Four, Whoa. which we'll get to. Not Shrek 4D, which is a different thing, which we'll also be talking about. But the whole system is structured against him. And I'm saying, like, maybe you should go back to the swamp because the pomposity and the ridiculousness of high society. Mm. I'm not saying he's not good enough for it. What I'm saying is it's ridiculous. And he's, quite frankly, if anything, he's too good for it because he's heart mason. He's actually got a heart of gold mason. That's very true. I don't know if you noticed that about him. So, yeah, the other thing I love about this movie... Puss in Boots, incredible. Often they'll bring in a new fun character, like a new fun sidekick, and you're like, boo, hate this, no thank you. Give me an example. Oh, like in any form of fiction. Star Wars, whatever happened in Independence Day 2. And then in Star Wars, you're talking about Han Solo, obviously. Yeah, exactly. That awful sidekick, Just, awful annoying sidekick. What a terrific series of movies. Until about 40 minutes into the first one when Han Solo shows right. up. And then it all just goes off a cliff. Yeah. And everybody agrees with me on that. Why couldn't this have been about farming? <laughs> I think actually Luke Skywalker's too good for an intergalactic war. I think he should have stayed farming. Maybe he That's should what have. That's you think. Yeah, maybe he should have. But the thing is about Puss in Boots. I don't know if I've mentioned this before in a video. I definitely have on our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. But I... I fucking love Zorro, Mason. Uh -huh. I fucking love Zorro. Mm. And this cat, it's just Zorro, isn't it? It's even the voice of Antonio Banderas. Is I love it. Do you love Zorro so much because you had a reverse Batman origin? Your parents, <laughs> as a child, your parents took you to see the Mark of Zorro, the Mask of Zorro, whatever, and you just had a really nice time. <laughs> yeah, I had a really nice time. Oh. Your mother's <laughs> pearls were intact yes. the entire night. we got to come back to those movies, though. The Zorro movies, that is. But I also like how after he's defeated, he's just like a massive suck up for no reason <laughs> to Shrek. I mean, Antonio... You like inconsistent characterization. Yes, Mason, okay, I do great. love that. Yeah, but you know, he knows what side his bread is buttered. That's you know, he's true. like, I'm hanging out with Shrek now. Yeah. That's cool. He's got a couple of sidekicks. He's no Han Solo, Mason, because mm. he's better is what I'm saying. Wow. And also Antonio Banderas, he provided the voice of Puss in Boots in English, Italian, Latin American, Spanish, Castilian Spanish, and Catalan Mason. Whoa. Incredible performer. Mm. Also... But just all at once. Yeah. Just, a, just an assortment of random words from all those languages. <laughs> the director's like, please, Antonio, <laughs> you're killing me here. You're killing me, mate. Also, more Zorro, please. Just more Zorro in general. Why isn't there a third Zorro movie? I know second Zorro wasn't great. Like, it was still pretty fun. What about third Zorro? What about that Django Zorro movie that was promised that's now a comic or whatever? What about future Zorro? He's a guy and he's a college student and he's just like, oh, I just want to dunk basketballs and, and, and kiss girls. But all of a sudden, I've got the legacy of Zorro. Yeah. This mysterious person shown up and be like, you have to be the new Zorro. He's a high-tech Zorro suit. Are you talking? It's terrible. <laughs> You're like, I'm not, I'm not going to wear that old dumb Zorro suit. I'm going to wear the cool new Zorro suit. 
It's worse, mate. Are you talking about the Phantom? I was going to say that or you, Knight Rider. Oh, either. Yeah, sure, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. No, I don't want that specifically. But there oh, was. I want that. There was Just plans to see how it goes. There was plans for like an uh, an apocalyptic future kind of Zorro situation. Oh. At one point. Anyway, more Zorro. <laughs> Everyone loves Zorro. More Zorro. Zorro Mason. He doesn't slice a Z into into somebody's shirt. He hands him an NFT. <laughs> God. Yeah. It's way worse. And you know you've been sorrowed. <laughs> the other thing is I like the way they expand the lore and they get into the backstory of like where everybody comes from, including like Princess Fiona. You know, the idea of where that curse comes from and, you know, the fairy godmother situation. But I think also I love the implication and it really is only an implication that that's all about the implication. I think so. That the fairy godmother and her involvement in Princess Fiona's curse, it seems to me as if she's set this entire thing up as just one big layup for her son. Like, from the get-go. <laughs> Played by notorious ladies' man, Rupert Everett. My goodness. Gals, take a number and get in line. Look out. <laughs> Here he comes. Just Great cast. Tremendous terrific, cast. Terrific, right? I mean, we got... we got um, Jennifer Saunders. We got Jennifer Saunders as the fairy godmother. Has a couple of really great musical numbers yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, I thought quite restrained, though. I would have liked her to go, like, full ab fab. Okay, right. <laughs> Yeah. Like too many white wines and, and, and too much insanity. But yeah, yeah, fair there enough. you go. Uh, Rupert Everett, we mentioned, who is great. Uh, Julie Andrews is the queen. Yep. Uh, and, of course, uh, Mr. John Cleese mm-hmm. as, a, as, a, as the king, a former legend who's now just you know just out just, of touch and mad at everything. How'd they get that performance out of his chains? <laughs> How'd they do it? <laughs> nah, just kidding. He's all right, mostly. Yeah, he's, he's mostly fine. He's mostly all right. Now, you've probably heard... Uh, me talk about how there's so many Shrek theories, Mason. Oh, yes. You probably heard that in the previous oh, video. Oh, I heard about that, yeah. Yeah. So here's a, here's a couple for okay. you. Okay. Or just one specifically. Shreeries? Yeah, okay. Okay, great. So I think Princess Fiona is maybe terrible. Go on. As a person. Okay. Uh, not like Heart of God and all that, et cetera, and so forth. Okay. Believe in yourself in true beauty is whatever, <laughs> et cetera, Mason. Okay, where are we going with this, though? All right. Okay, there's a moment at the start where she throws the little mermaid into a pack of sharks. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm, yeah. And it's a feeding frenzy. Yes. Which, quite frankly, I don't have a problem with. Mm. Uh, she throws a mermaid who is legally distinct from the little mermaid. That's true, actually. To some sharks. Yeah, you're right. Uh, which is fine. It's not, they're not brand- She's not branded. It's fine. But have you heard the cannibal theory, Mason? No. So this is why... I mean, f- again, they did it. Shrek did eat a lot of eyeballs in the previous movie, so... <laughs> That's true, yeah. But uh, but this comes from Freudster, a person on Reddit. Okay. Which, you know, could go any number of ways. Like Sigmund Freud? Yeah, sure. Like a like an AI of Sigmund Freud? Yeah, like an AI of Sigmund Freud. And he's <laughs> like, oh, you want to have sex with your mum, etc. Bleep bloop, Mason. Huh. So in the first Sh- uh, Shrek movie, the... Dragon has a book, a cookbook called Nightly Treats, right? Mm -hmm. And the theory is that the dragon is not only cooking the nights for herself, but also for Princess Fiona, (gasps) because she doesn't have any food, it seems. Maybe she's got a magic whatever, but I didn't see a magic whatever, Mason. I didn't see a magic whatever either. I just saw a bunch of dead knights in a big cookbook. Whoa. Now... You might also be like, well, the knights brought horses with them also. So she simply ate the horses, sure. But the horses, as you see at the beginning, they never cross the bridge. (gasps) They're all on the other side. Huh. Now, the other side of this is... Okay. It could be said that maybe she's only eating humans when she's in ogre form, which technically doesn't make her a cannibal, so all of this is fine. Seems Uh, fine. So anyway, it's just just something to add and think about. Well, if we're going to add moral quandaries, one that I picked up on, I think, is that in order to storm the castle at Far, Far Away to... uh, to Reunite Shrek and Fiona. Yeah. Uh, the the good the the good guys. Yeah. The good guys, as you as you might call them, they go to the Muffin Man at Drury Lane, mm-hmm. and they have him create a living being, yeah. Mongo. Yeah. A little reference to Mongo from Blazing Saddles, I guess. Yeah, yeah. A childlike entity, but still a sentient being that they send to his death. <laughs> They know he's going to be killed. <laughs> they don't know that necessarily. They know he's going to be killed. <laughs> and they lure him in with little treats. They're like, look at the little horsey. That's you true, can eat actually. that. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's killed. And look, technically he's not killed because at the end... He never comes back. You see him singing along at the end. Yeah. But he's doomed under there. Yeah. Because he's a wet cookie underwater. <laughs> you can't retrieve a wet cookie from underwater. No. He'll come to he'll fall to bits. It's like trying to retrieve the Titanic at this point. Pointless. Right? Pointless because who cares? Yeah. Anyway, monsters is what I'm saying. Yeah. They're, they're worse than the people they're trying to defeat. I don't disagree. I mean, that character arc of that giant freak, <laughs> I love it. It's really sad. Yeah. Like, he gets these heroic moments and he comes into his own, then his arms fall off. He falls <laughs> to his death. And the, and, the, and the little gingerbread man's like, no! And he's like, be good as he dies. It's really sad, Mason. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and they knew. 
They knew. <laughs> they probably knew. It's like knew. D-Day for that man. <laughs> that gingerbread man. <laughs> Mason. References. Mm. Then current but today dated references, what do you think? I'm excited for it. Lord of the Rings. Love it. Spider-Man Upside Down Kiss. Lord of the Rings is still current. People would get that. No, I, yeah, that's fair. Mission Impossible, Oh, Mason. that one's dated. OJ Simpson's Car Chase, Mason. Mm. Cocaine, Mason. Wow. Well, that never goes out that's, of style, does it? That's timeless, yeah. Yeah, how did you feel about the references in this? I feel it's a bit lighter and a bit more kind of a bit broader, like you said. Than the first one. I think they were lighter, but also I feel I don't know. I, I felt like the um, I felt like the Mission Impossible sequence felt extremely dated. I don't know why, because that first movie is a classic. It's yeah. just and they still do it in things, right? No, don't they? They probably. I mean, they probably they do it every year at the MTV Movie Awards. It's just tradition at this. Yeah, point. absolutely. Now, in terms of animation, I mean, we could talk to death about how it's such an improvement on the previous movie. Not Again, not that the previous one looks bad, but, you know, we'll talk about budget and how that mm-hmm. relates to this. But there's so much detail in the world and everything's more vibrant and all the characters are more animated and there are more of them in general, right? Sure. For example... More is better. I agree. More is always better. And I think we're going to find that in Shrek the Third, Mason. Oh, I think no. you'll find, Mason. I think you'll find. Oh, I think oh. you'll find. I'm not being facetious, Mason. I think you'll find. But uh, Shrek's face, though, it's so expressive because apparently he had 218 working muscles in it. But that's not what I want to talk about in regards to... You want to talk to about it. the hair, don't you? Well, I want to talk about Handsome Shrek. Okay. And I want I want to debate, Mason. <laughs> the thing about Handsome Shrek is, is he's completely unique in the world because there are only two types of men in the Shrek universe. There's weedy little Lord Fauntleroy types <laughs> who have funny little moustaches and they're all squished down. And there's enormous goons. <laughs> like, just, just yeah. hairless personality-free goons. He's the only one who's like a manly man who has an expressive face. Yeah, that's fair. That mm. makes a really good point. But here's the thing, though. Is he handsome? Ah. Uh, because I don't know if he is. Wow. He's still, he's kind of like bulbous. I've seen... Tell you what, let's get all the ladies who are waiting in line for Rupert Everett. We'll ask their opinion. <laughs> that's a great point. Yeah. But I, I've seen him like Photoshop with a beard. Okay. And I think that adds a lot to it. Mm. But I just think in general... Yeah. Maybe not as handsome as everybody thinks he is, but again, universe of freaks. Yeah. All the men are like, you know, they've got beautiful hair and they're, and they're sullen and awful or they're horrible little creeps or whatever. Yeah. So I guess in this universe, this is handsome. I think so, I'm yeah. just not convinced, Mason. Maybe he's, it's just the novelty. I think it's the smell as well. People are like, this guy smells good. Because normal Shrek, you know, I don't think he's completely hideous. He just would smell terrible. Oh, you think the magic made human Shrek smell really good? Yes. Pheromones and whatnot also. <laughs> just sure. all of that. Right, right, right. I also found it really unfair that why couldn't Donkey just stay as a sexy horse, you know? He could have kissed his Sorry, what love. kind of horse? A sexy horse, oh. Mason. I didn't misspeak. <laughs> he is a sexy horse. That's not me thinking he's sexy. Okay. But it, it, he says it himself also. Uh, I, oh, <laughs> I guess that's okay then. Yeah. If he had have kissed the dragon, mm-hmm. he could have stayed sexy. And yet oh, he yeah. that, he was robbed of it, Mason. That's true. Not fair. Couldn't they just get another one of those potions? Probably. But the fairy godmother was killed, remember? <laughs> anyway, I want to talk more about the dragon in a bit, but go on. You know what I like about Donkey? Yeah. And I didn't mention in the last uh, video. Is it how sexy he is? No, it's that he's just like a little corgi. <laughs> yeah, he like is. he behaves like a corgi. Yeah, he's animated like a dog. You're yeah. 100% right. Yeah. It's fine. He's it's not animated like a donkey. They took a dog and they went, let's do mm-hmm. that. Yeah. 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 Mm. But also a fact that I learned is that they they, uh, they brought in a wig maker Yeah. to uh, to ensure that, like a real life one, to ensure that all the hair looks as realistic as possible. Yeah. Great hair, right? Great hair. Now, do you want to know about the original Shrek too? Oh, okay, sure. Here we go. So, uh, according to Andrew Adamson, who's the director on this, John Lithgow would have originally reprised his role as Lord Farquaad, and he would redeem himself at the end, saving Shrek from the fairy godmother. Oh. Fiona would also accept Shrek's offer to remain human and kiss him before midnight, and Harold would not get turned into a frog. Mm. Mm. Something mm. to think about. Isn't it, though? How do you feel about uh, regular staying um, as, a, as a woman, Fiona? She couldn't eat as many people, I'd imagine. It's true, she'd have to get used to humans. Maybe food. that's why she was like, you know what, I just want to I want to be an ogre because I just <laughs> want to be my true self. True self. I'm going to eat so many people. No, I, th- I mean, that, that goes against the message of the movie. Exactly, it? yeah. Right. Sh- she could have become a serial killer in Shrek 3. Yeah. Shrek screenwriters Tony Rossio and Ted Elliott opted out uh, of this movie over creative differences but still remained on the project as consultants. But many of the elements that they were going to put into the movie. How, wait, 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 wait. How do, you, how do you stay off as a screenwriter but you stay on as a consultant? Just... Stat- just Statler and Waldorf and I don't being like, like this no, version. I don't like that. No, I wouldn't have done that. What would you have done? Not telling. 
because I'm not the screenwriter anymore. <laughs> but many of the elements were actually reused for Shrek, the ghost of Lord Farquaad, also known as Shrek 4D. Oh, which but is, that's not Shrek 4. No, that's that's a 3D-based ride at Universal Studios. Ah. Anyways, it's green trivia time. Bearing in mind that it's called green trivia, not because of the Shrek thing. But for another reason that we've forgotten. And the guy will be yelling Rodney, but he's in a swamp and that's unrelated. That's also unrelated. Yep. Yeah. Rodney! 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 Because remember the small boner in the first movie? You remember? Not really. Now you remember. I remember you talking about it. <laughs> Everyone's talking about it. It's not just me, Mason. Uh-huh. You see some uh, potion bottles on a conveyor belt at one point, and one of them is marked Fiagra. Oh! Is- <laughs> so originally, Dragon from Shrek was to have a major role, and she would have turned into a Pegasus when Donkey drank the potion. Uh Also, apparently that does happen off screen, like that is confirmed. That pregnant dragon was changed into a Pegasus very late in the day during pregnancy, which, I mean, what does that do to you? Right? Good Lord. It's like drinking while you're pregnant. <laughs> exactly. You'd have some freak babies. you have some freak, well, she, and she did. Yeah. I mean, that would have happened anyway, but yeah. you know. Now, an initial story concept was to have Fiona's father, King Harold, appear nude throughout the movie as and the, the emperor <laughs> just, just cause. No, no, the emperor's new clothes situation. Uh, I see, right. I think that would have been terrific. Just the whole time he's convinced yes. he's wearing some finery. Okay. Yes, Mason. Mm. The part where Prince Charming tricks Fiona into thinking he's Shrek. I found these four bits of trivia on IMDb. So they're probably not true. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe they are. Or somebody's maybe a really big fan of one particular property. Let's go. Let's find out. But like a fairy tale, it's not what's actually true. It's what you reckon. Yeah, and, and you can be ugly, I guess. Yeah. The part where Prince Charming tricks Fiona into thinking he's Shrek references Gilligan's Island, will the real Mr. Howe please stand up? That's one. Okay. The part where Prince Charming tricks Fiona into thinking he's Shrek also references Gilligan's Island's Gilligan versus Gilligan. The part where Prince Charming tricks Fiona into thinking he's Shrek also references Gilligan's Island's All About Eva. The scene when Fiona looks into the mirror and sees her former human self also references Gilligan's Island's Head today, gone tomorrow. These are just generic tropes in a movie. This isn't yeah. all Gilligan's Island I don't related. Think anything's, Who did this? I don't think anything's referenced Gilligan's Island since like a week after <laughs> the series Gilligan's Island ended. I think they did it in The Simpsons. And it was Gilligan goes back to Gilligan's Island <laughs> yeah. that one time. There was that time, and wasn't it? And the time it? the Harlem Globetrotters were there. That was fun, wasn't it? Mm. I have seen that. I remember watching that as a kid in a midday movie and just being like, maybe TV's not good. <laughs> maybe I've been led astray. Maybe I'm going to go and burn down the offices of Channel 9. <laughs> Mason Box Office. Ooh. This scored the biggest opening ever for an animated movie, topping Finding Nemo. It had a budget of $150 million and it made $928.7 million. Incredible, Mason. This is still one of the, big, the biggest animated movies of all time. I mean, it's been surpassed by like, Minions and whatever since, but huh. I don't think I don't think you against underst- minions nothing had a chance. It's really. true. I don't think you understand how big this was, Mason. I don't think you get it. No, I get it. <laughs> uh, also, this is how big it was. This became the second movie in Australian cinema history to gross more than fifty million dollars. Titanic was the first. That's right. That's the state of our film industry, everybody. <laughs> the states we're in over <laughs> here. Uh, now, I guess my question is to you yep. and everybody. Mm-hmm. Did you have a shrekingly good time? I think I did have a shrekingly good time. But was it better than the first Shrek? I think it was about the same. <laughs> well, that's good though, isn't it? I think so, yeah. That's a good time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was expecting a rapid decline. Yeah. And uh, here we are. Put a pin in that, maybe. Oh, no. Just in case you go to Universal Studios and you go on the 4D experience. I can't imagine it would be anything like this movie. That's what I'm referring to, Mason. Anyways, we'll be back. Uh, Great. <laughs> to talk Shrek the Third, mm-hmm. the movie that came three years after. And some people say is terrible. Some people like you. Yeah, but I, I oh, haven't watched. On, I haven't watched it in a while. Okay, Ma- so it's, it could improve somehow. <laughs> yeah, it could improve somehow. Huh. Maybe my mindset has changed. You know, I grow, I evolve. Mm. I'm a normal person. I look at a thing and then I learn new information and I go, "There's new information," and I recognise that in my in my heart. I change, Mason. You've never I've, changed. I'm changing. All you the time. still eat eyeballs in the swamp. I've seen you do it. That's not strictly true. I eat it in bed. 
<laughs> we go. Anyways, uh, if you do want to see that early, and of course you do, Mason. Absolutely. Bullshit. Uh, the movie. I mean, you can just watch it, but I'm talking about specifically the episode we're going to do on it for Caravan of Garbage. If you head over to BigSandwich.co, when Ben and Lawrence finish the edit, they go up there early. And in addition to that, that's not the only thing there. It's all ad-free. There's bonus podcasts. There's movie commentaries. Our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, that comes out there a day early on Sunday, as opposed to Monday. Check it out if you are so inclined. Please do. Wow, Mason. What a lot of stuff over there. I so agree. much stuff. There's a huge back catalogue. It's insulting how much stuff is on there. That's exactly right. And like a wonderful fairy tale, all timeless. Mm. None of it's dated at Agreed. all. Agreed. Completely agree. All right, thanks, everybody. Grab that Shrek, you guys. We'll see you next week. Are you going to do that even when Shrek finishes? Maybe. Who's to say? I think we should build just more impenetrable references in <laughs> I think the videos. so, too, yeah. You know, I think that's great. People enjoy that. I don't know what happened to Blue Harvest. I guess I'm not doing it at the moment. Yeah, it's just when we <laughs> run out of enthusiasm for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Thank you.